stance. Secondary stance, that there's really two things that we have to do. You know, we have to be able to block, we have to be able to throw. Okay, so we've got to be a little bit higher, a little bit more athletic. Um, and one time, uh, this is when I let you cheat a little bit. I uh, say so, you know, cheating doesn't sound like a good thing, but I let you stagger your feet. I think the ball of your right foot should be an instep of your left foot. Uh, again, a lot of times I see guys, they, they cheat way too much. And what happens is it's okay if you stagger your feet, but if I start to stagger my shoulders and start to turn, now I want a narrower target for the pitcher, uh, and two, it makes it a lot more difficult to block balls to my arm side. Uh, again, we can shift, and it's harder to get, to get around balls more, and it's just more difficult. <coughs> so we want to be in a good secondary stance. And again, this is with anybody on base, or there's two strikes on the hitter. Uh, again, we, we want to make sure that we're, we're ready to block balls in the dirt at all times. Uh, pictures of our secondary stance. Uh, you, see, you see the butts up a little bit higher in the air. Uh, the picture on the right, you see his feet are staggered, the ball of his right foot is even with the instep of his left foot, his thighs are about parallel to the ground. Uh, I didn't say it before, but you see his throwing hand. There's two places you can really put it. You can put it behind your neck, or you can put it behind your body. And it's not that I don't care, but I don't necessarily think one is better than the other. I think there's pros and cons of each. Um, I think when you put it behind your mitt, uh, I think it, it, it keeps you out of a bad habit of transferring the ball low when you're getting ready to throw a second base. We'll talk about throwing it at, at the end of the uh, slideshow. But it also exposes it a lot of times because guys don't do a very good job and keep it the pitch isn't um, thrown right at it at the shift and the throwing hand gets exposed uh, either way. And like I said, really that's not any good. We don't want guys to miss time uh, due to a, an injury with a foul ball or something like that. If you keep it behind, uh, I, I don't necessarily think it's any slower. There's so many guys in the big leagues now that keep their hand behind them at all times. And I don't really blame them. They're, they're getting paid so much money they can't afford to, to miss games. I mean, they're getting paid millions of dollars. They, if they you know, get hit by a foul ball and, and now they're out for half the season, it's not very good for them. So uh, they keep it behind. The only negative, like I say, is sometimes it, do, it doesn't make you slower to second base, but sometimes guys will get in the habit where you transfer the ball lower and it takes more time uh, up there. Uh, when we talk about receiving, we, we say it's the most important job we have. Uh, and I, I think it is definitely not practiced enough. Our, our guys, we practice receiving and blocking every day, and then we're going to practice at least one other skill. So for us, the first thing we'll do is we'll stretch and throw and get loose, and then we have what's called early work. So for us, our catchers will go with me. Uh, coach Mack, our head coach, take our infielders. Outfielders go with the outfield coach, and pitchers with pitching coach. And we'll just do defensive stuff. And every day, we're going to block, we're going to receive, and then we're going to do at least one other skill. So occasionally we'll get two skills in depending on time, whether that's throwing bases or tag plays to play or pop flies uh, or whatnot there. But we have to practice receiving, uh, and really receiving well. And that's one thing that... It's important to me. Uh, I think there's a big difference between just simply receiving the ball uh, and catching it and then doing a great job catching it. So i got a few other tips um, down below uh, about that. We, I say sway versus quiet body. And again, if you're in here, you're probably a catching guy or coach catchers before. There, there's some different schools of thought on what we should do. And it's objective. You, what, what's good for you may not quite be good for me. I like our guys to have a quiet body. Okay, and by quiet body, it means when we set up in our, our primary or secondary stance, if the pitch isn't thrown uh, and split me, I, I would sway or keep my body quiet and just move my mitt. I like it when we have a quiet body. I think we get a lot more strikes that way. Uh, again, I'm not saying it's wrong or if there's another guy that spoke here today uh, and says sway and catch the ball on the middle of your body, I'm not saying that's, that's bad, but it's not what we teach. I think when you do sway, uh, the theory behind it is you want to catch the ball on the middle of your body which makes sense, it looks like a strike when you catch it in the middle of the body, but I think it looks more like a strike to the pitcher. And ultimately it's important that we make it look like a strike to the umpire. So the umpire is sitting uh, or standing you know, eight to 10 inches behind us. If I can keep my body quiet and just move my mitt and his head's right behind mine, I get a lot more strikes than if I were to shift eight or 10 inches uh, to either side of the plate. And that's what I found. Our guys get a lot more strikes that way. When I see other teams and other guys that, that sway, again, I'm not going to say it's incorrect that's what you teach, um, but I think we get a lot more strikes that way. I think umpires uh, get a lot more calls for us. Because ultimately, uh, the strikes are called when they look like strikes. Um, everybody in here, again, is probably either caught or coach catchers. Um, and you know, let's say I set up outside to a right-handed hitter, Sometimes a pitcher might miss on the inside corner when the ball probably crossed the plate. If I catch it too far outside my body, he's calling it a ball because it looks like a ball there by the stands. And vice versa, if it's 0-2 and I set up six inches or four inches off the plate and the pitcher throws it right at my target and I catch it and do a great job, a lot of times he rings him up on that and we get, we get the out call because it looks like a strike. Because really, uh, umpires are they're human. I mean, they're people. You know, a lot of times there's there's 
But imagine your state championship game, there's three or 400 people there, 500 or 1,000 people there, or it's an in-state rivalry game where we're playing uh, Kentucky or Western Kentucky in one of these schools and there's thousands of people in the stands. If it looks like a strike, he's gonna call it a strike because he doesn't want 3,000 people in the stands yelling at him. If it looks like a ball, he's gonna call it a ball uh, and so the crowd doesn't get all over. So our job is to make it look like a strike to the umpire. Now I don't think, that, I'm not into doing magic tricks and trying to do crazy things. I think we should just you know, catch it and really control it, uh, which will kind of get uh, my next slide right here. I say quiet body and along with that is strong hands. By strong hands, I mean once the ball hits our mitt, our mitt shouldn't move anymore. Okay? So some people teach the soft hands where they kind of want to funnel it in. Uh, and again, I'm not going to say that's wrong, but I, I don't want any movement. After the ball hits my mitt, the more movement I have, uh, the, less, the less percentage of the time I'll get a strike. So what I want to do is I want to control it. And, and really to control it, i got to beat the ball to the spot. So by beating the ball to the spot, you guys have probably heard that before, I need my mitt to be where the ball is going to be before the ball gets there. Okay, so uh, if the pitch is thrown inside or righty and I'm set up down the middle, uh, if, my ball, if the ball and my mitt meet each other, my mitt has momentum, it gets taken out of the zone, uh, and I, I don't control it, and it looks like the pitcher missed the spot a lot more. Same thing outside. When my mitt has momentum outside the strike zone, then we bring it back in. Uh, we just don't get any strikes that way. We don't get near as many strikes that way. So I teach strong hands. Um, so once the ball hits our mitt, like I said, our mitt should not move anymore. That's our goal. When you're doing your drills, whether it's off the machine, off the pitcher, in the bullpen, uh, or just a coach or another catcher throwing to you, if you work on one thing receiving-wise, whether you sway or whether you uh, have a quiet body, try to get you guys to have strong hands. You know, there's some drills where you're catching a tennis ball or catching an incredible ball, and I think those things are fine, um, but, but I, I like the term strong. There's, I heard soft, you know, guys think soft hands, you want soft hands. Well, in all the sports, I don't know what you want to do soft. You, you, you want to be strong. You want to be athletic. You want to be strong. So we like the term strong hands. It seems to hit home with our players a little bit more. Um, on, the, on the flip side of the receiving, like I said, <clears throat> we're going to practice blocking every day. Um, not a day should go by that you or your team does not practice um, blocking. So uh, when we talk about our mechanics blocking, uh, and I'll talk about drills and some things at the end, the first thing we say is our mitt should cover the five hole. Uh, five holes is the terminology we use for the hole between our legs. We never want a ball to go between our legs or under us. We've got to get our mitt in the five hole. Uh, another thing that I like is we have to have our elbows tucked against our side. Okay, and you'll see in a picture in the next slide. Uh, we want our elbows tucked in. When we don't get quite low enough and our elbows are straight, uh, one, more balls hit our elbow, or, I'm sorry, hit our forearms. Uh, two things happen, really. One, it, it <coughs> doesn't feel very good. You get the seam marks on your wrist, and, and that doesn't feel very fun. And the ball never stays right in front of you. It always ricochets and, and goes somewhere off. So when you're watching your guys block, Make sure if they're upright, a lot of times their elbows are locked out and they're narrower than if they were and they had their elbows tucked against our side. That's one thing we talk about um, there. We want our chest slightly lean forward. I don't know why, it seems like over the past couple of years, a lot of catchers, they, they lean forward way too much. I mean, they get their chest and then they really make themselves a lot shorter. And I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to, to really kill the ball when the ball hits their chest. It's gonna go straight down to the ground. Um, but, but really, that's not what does it. We, we don't want a ball to ever bounce over our head or hit us in the top of the the helmet. Um, we, we want to be, uh, we want to find a happy medium between how tall we, we can be and also to create an angle to get the ball to stay uh, within our circle and our close proximity in front of us. We want our shoulders rounded forward. Uh, we also want our chin tucked. For anybody who's ever caught and, and got hit with the ball and throw before, it's not a whole lot of fun. Uh, so here you see our pictures of our guys. Uh, the picture on the left is the front view and you really get a good shot of his elbows. You see how his elbows are tucked into his side. He makes himself two or three inches wider uh, on each side of his body, which really helps out a lot. He'll catch a lot of balls uh, right in the crease by your elbow right there. His mitts down on the ground, covering the five hole. His chin's stuck, and then you see in the picture on the right, his shoulders are slightly leaned forward, uh, and it's a pretty good blocking position. So, you know, there's two things. One, it, we want to be, we want to have good mechanics. We want to get to that position, uh, but ultimately, we have to be a good blocker. It doesn't always mean having great mechanics. So the two things that I think that uh, we should really try to do uh, blocking-wise is one, you have to anticipate the ball in the dirt. Um, it, it's, it's like when you hit. If you think the guy's going to throw you a breaking ball and you're set up and then you're sitting on it and he throws your fastball in, it's just by you. You don't have time to react. Every time you put down uh, more than one finger, we should be ready for the ball to bounce. Um, so have you catchers anticipate it. 
Um, and then our body must be still before the ball hits you. Similar, similar to receiving, and I say we have to um, beat the ball to the spot, we have to do the same blocking wise. When, when balls ricochet and go far away from us, it's not usually because we're in a bad position, it's because our body's still moving when the ball hits you. So a key, and I've even heard people say you, you should exhale when the ball hits you, um, and, and that's, man, that's great if you can do that, but I think that's, that's kind of asking a lot. That's kind of that's difficult for a lot of guys. I don't think it's very practical. Um, so what we try to get our guys to do is we try to get them a solid blocking position, uh, and then we want to beat the ball to the spot just like we receive. We want to be down. We want to be still when the ball hits us. If you watch it in slow mo, uh, and you video your guys, um, if your body's still falling forward, if your knees haven't hit the ground, the ball hits your chest. That's when it really ricochets away from you. That's when the ball gets to be um, 10, 12, and you know, 15 feet away, uh, as opposed to when you're still. Now it's five or six feet away. Uh, and there's a big difference between even five or six feet straight ahead and five or six feet to the left or right. Uh, to, to runners on base, they, they don't want to advance on, on a ball that's blocked straight back in front of you, straight back towards the plate. We always use that relationship with the plate. Um, even if it goes uh, six feet in front of you, a runner is a lot less likely to advance than if it goes six feet to the side. Now it takes me the same amount of time to get both balls, uh, but the runner is a lot more likely to advance on this ball, and I have a shorter throw to second base when I can keep it in front of me. Um, so I, I gotta be still. I gotta keep the ball <coughs> ricocheting all over the place.